Hey guys, it's Lauren and baby Eric, and we are here to talk about a head control and core control exercise that you can do for kiddos to improve their ability to get up off the floor and their head control, so stay tuned. do today is talk about pull to sit and a lot of times people are taught this exercise from their pediatricians or someone to work on to build core strength and head control when the baby is is super little but what a lot of people don't talk about is that it's a really important exercise to do whether your kiddo is like three months old or even up to a couple years old depending on if they need core strength or if they need to work on their head control or simply if they just can't do it. So I really want you guys to kind of throw out the rule book on it being only for babies. And if you have a kiddo, especially a kiddo with developmental delay, this is a really great exercise to work on no matter what age. Okay, so basically what you're gonna need is either a small towel or a pillow. It really just depends on how much the kiddo needs an assistance. So um, we're gonna pretend that baby Eric is just not even to the point where he's engaging his elbows to pull up and pull the sit. So we're gonna get him a fairly big pillow because what this does is it allows him to beat gravity. So what I'm doing here with his feet is I kind of bend his knees up, put his feet on the ground, and then I kind of block him in with my legs. So um, I like to do that because I like to stabilize. That way their legs can't extend. They're able to isolate their head and neck as well as their core a little bit better. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the kiddo's hands. They are little or if they don't have a lot of arm strength, you can give them one finger. So giving them one finger is gonna allow their grip to be stronger because this is a stronger grip position than this is if they're trying to hold your whole hand. This is a weaker position than this would be if they only were to grab your finger. So you can give them your thumb, you can give them a couple fingers, however you want to do that or that works for you guys. Um, but like here, because baby Eric is a baby doll. He doesn't have any tone at all in his body. He can't activate any muscles. He is just kind of hanging here, right? If I pull too hard, I can dislocate his shoulders. And a lot of times we see that with kiddos who are A, less than three months. Um, so you wouldn't do this for a kiddo less than three months old or kiddos who um, just have low tone and they just haven't gotten that inner strength in their arm muscles yet enough to be able to pull at all or even really flex their elbows intentionally so if you're here with a kiddo and they're not pulling at all like you're there there's nothing here what i want you to focus on is just the repetitive motion of bending and straightening their elbows for them i had a kiddo once where i was working with her since she was three months old and literally we did this for like two months just working on me bending and straightening her elbows while we sang, row, row, row your boat, the wheels on the bus, twinkle, twinkle, little star, which is like, for some reason, my totally go-to song. And it took her that long to be able to be like, oh, I can move my arms this way and I can pull against your resistance. And so by the end of like, probably six months, five months of therapy, she was pulling to sit and she was engaging her head control and things like that. So it does take time, but just know that this repetitive motion really can assist a kiddo in being able to pull to sit. So if you kind of pull, it's gonna be on the extension. So if you're helping them bend their elbow, it's gonna be on the lengthening or the extension that they're gonna resist you. Okay, so it's gonna be on this pull that they're gonna bend their elbows and try to start lifting their trunk up. So ideally you want their head, their chin to tuck, 
before they lift their shoulders up. A lot of times if your kiddo has head control difficulties or hasn't built the head control strength yet, then they're gonna kind of keep their head laying back while pulling up. You don't necessarily want to encourage that. So if they are pulling and you want to start promoting, what you can do is you can lift them up even further. So get like another pillow or something where their head is already tucked. And then when they pull, their head's not going too far back. It's just kind of staying in neutral and work from that more upright position. Or if you have two people, one person can just be a fulcrum here and just tuck their chin while the other person has both their hands kind of pulling up this way. So the kiddo is still learning that, oh, hey, I need to bring my chin down and in order to engage my head and neck in order to be able to move, do this motion. The other thing you can do is you can work with a chewy or a pacifier and work on them being in this position and trying, holding that pacifier steady and seeing if they can try to lift their head in order to try and engage that motion first and then see, okay, now that they've done that a couple times, see if they'll be able to pull their head neck while they pull themselves up. Because ideally you want it to be this motion, the head is coming down. So when they pull, the head is coming down and they're pulling their elbows and their trunk up, but their head is not like this when they're pulling up. The biggest thing that you want to be aware of from a safety standpoint is after they pull up, gravity is going to be pushing them down. So a lot of kiddos might be able to get themselves off a pillow, but then they're like, boop, lost it. So you want to make sure that you have a pillow behind them so that you're not doing this from the ground and they pull themselves up and then knock their head on the ground. Obviously that would not be a good situation. One of my favorite things to do once a kiddo is able to pull themselves up and then bring themselves down is actually to transition into a pull to sit. So I'm kind of, so pull to sit, just ignore Eric's head being tilted. Okay, there we go. Pull to sit and then stand. Depending on how little they are, then you can bring them back down into a sit and then all the way back into a recline. If they're a little bit bigger like toddlers and they're just, they're able to bend, but they're not able to do a full sit up on their own. One of my favorite things, it's a little goofy, so you gotta get your goofy pants on, is pull the sit, stand up, and then you kind of pick them up and just go rawr, 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 scoop them up and put them back on the floor. A lot of times if they're a toddler, they're, you don't necessarily need a pillow. Maybe you have like a mat, um, but they have enough head control typically that they're not just gonna like throw their head back. Unless they're more impacted, they have more delays, in which case you can absolutely use a pillow and still do this. I have a lot of kiddos that have visual impairments that are nonverbal, that use gait trainers and things like that, different types of equipment, standards to walk and stand. Um, and I still do these activities. I just make sure I have like a one to two inch mat underneath so that if they do go back, because sometimes they're just a little finicky and they just are on their own agenda. So sometimes they're like, oh, Miss Lauren, no thanks, I'm over this, um, in their little nonverbal way, and then they just throw themselves back, and then you have to make sure that you have precautions in place so that they don't smack their head. Obviously, safety is our number one concern as physical therapists, so we want safe mobility. Again, it's gonna be harder if the kiddo is coming all the way from the ground, but again, you would get them to this position and either go to the stand to sit all the way down or just to this position and then back down. When they are going from this position, they're gonna be bending their arms, bending their arms, bending their arms. As they go down, this is the hard part. It's called an eccentric contraction and it's going to be, gravity is pushing them down. So their arm muscles have to be strong enough to take both their momentum going down plus gravity pushing them down to go down in a controlled environment. A lot of times their muscles just aren't strong enough. So there will be a point where they just kind of break and then they just go down um, at a quicker pace. So you just have to be careful of that and just knowledgeable so that you can keep the kiddo 
safe and have like something that's squishy underneath their noggin. If you have a kiddo and they pull up, go to stand, go to sit, come back down, that is an amazing exercise. It incorporates pull to sit, toddler squat, sit to stand all in one and it's like the most amazing thing ever. Um, a lot of kiddos are only gonna be able to do four or five, maybe up to 10, 20 would be asking a ton. Just keep in mind, it's not about how many they can do, and it's not about if they can do it all the way. What it is about though is, where is that kiddo at at that specific moment? Focusing on that, collecting data on that, okay, my kiddo was able to come up four times from the ground, Okay, and then the fifth time took a lot more prompting, but they were able to do it. And then we did that three sets. And so just knowing, and even if you're doing this at home, sometimes just having a little check sheet, checklist, like if you're doing your own workouts, you maybe document what weight you're using, doing that for your kiddos, seeing how they are moving and how they can grow can be so rewarding because really tracking that progress is what makes all of the effort that you put in to do exercises and to do home exercise programs with your kiddos so much more rewarding to see how like what you're doing is impacting your kiddo and their ability to access their environment and just explore like what a great gift you're giving to your kiddos so what you do is important and what you do is worth it and my goal is just to help you feel more confident and knowing how you can better serve your kiddos at home. I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please post them below or any areas where you would like a little bit more information. One of my favorite things to do is to post content that you guys specifically want to learn about. So hope you have an awesome day. Bye guys.